All right, welcome back. It's still News Hub if you just tuned in. Now we are shifting our focus to a topic uh, that has generated some heated arguments in recent times. Now there's been calls for the abolition of death penalty in our judicial system, even as the Undusted governor uh, made his intention to sign the execution papers of some condemned criminals in the state. Uh, what will be the implications of this call and how will it affect our judicial system? Now, we've been joined in our Port Harcourt studio. We have uh, Barrister Haya King. He's a human rights advocate. You're welcome to the program. And uh, we'll also be joined on the phone by Pamela Okorigwe. Pamela is the program's director of LEDA. Pamela, you're welcome to the program. Okay, much later we'll hook up with Pamela. But let's begin with you, uh, Barrister Haya King. Uh, let me know your, your take for uh, the call for the abolition of death penalty. Uh, we know the Ten Commandments for the Christians, and thou shalt not kill. Uh, do you think this, in this, in this um, calling for the abolition of death penalty, especially for those who also commit murder, do you think it's a, the right step in the right direction? Well, um, before I say that, I want to say that uh, actually no human has the right to take another's uh, life. But again, if you have brazenly, openly, intentionally taken another's life, and uh, you have been given the opportunity in the courts, and uh, you have exhausted the stratas of court, talking about the high court, the uh, appeal court, and the supreme court, and uh, you have been found guilty, I see no reason why you shouldn't be killed. In fact, I am even against uh, you being on death row for a long time, like in our river state, for instance, uh, we have not executed, uh, the governors have not executed anybody since 1995. I think the last execution was the environmental uh, activist uh, Ken Sarawiwa, and after then, nobody has been executed. So I am even frowning at not executing them than saying that uh, they shouldn't be executed. But again, Crime like drugs and other crime that uh, does not involve the intentional killing of human beings, I think uh, those ones, death penalty should be abolished uh, in them. Uh, you know, uh, for me, if you kill somebody openly and brazenly and intentionally, I see no reason why you should uh, be asking that uh, you shouldn't be killed. Keeping you, for me, that is even where I am against. Then alternatively, we can say, uh, we give you uh, a life imprisonment without uh, parole. Because if you look at uh, the, the, the consequences of, uh, of uh, 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 abolishing of uh, death penalty and the merit that we are going to get if we you know, the, abolish it, I think the consequences is more. If you look at the United States of America, uh, the state of Illinois, I was looking at the uh, statistics, and I discovered that the state of Illinois, one... Uh, uh, George uh, Ryan in 2003 or so uh, tried to, uh, you know, uh, 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 make a, a moratorium, you know, towards abolition of um, of uh, a death penalty. That same year, when the governor signed that law, that you know, that uh, towards abolition of uh, you know death penalty, they had 150 cases of murder in that same place. So, um, for instance, in United States, you discover that uh, about 30 states in United States have uh, not abolished it. Just 20 states in the in United States have abolished uh, the, the death penalty. And if you look at those states, those states are where you have crime in America, up to today. That is where you have the highest number of crime. Then imagine we are Nigeria. Now, Nigeria, we have not abolished all states, all 36 states in Nigeria apply death uh, penalty. Now, and we have this kind of crime. Imagine where it is abolished completely. I am saying, let me be quoted very well, that murder cases, if you kill human, not accidental case, not running over, not uh, manslaughter, I am talking killing. You went to rob and you carry a gun and the person resists you, you kill him. You see a policeman doing his job, you kill him. You see an army man, you kill him. You as a policeman, you are going to arrest somebody, the person is not armed, you kill him. You should be arrested and prosecuted. The only area I will frown is when you are not given fair trial. 
But once you are given fair trial, as you are given fair trial, where you should uh, you should face it up to the Supreme Court, where you have exhausted your appeal and you have nowhere to go again. You should appeal to God, and appealing to God means to go and meet God. If you are a Christian, if you have repented in prison, you should go and meet God. Uh, that is dying to go and meet God. Then if you have not repented, you go and meet Satan. There is no two ways about it. I mean, you cannot keep people. If you do that, our cry, especially in Nigeria. Even look at the United States that are, are clamoring for it. 30 states have not, check the statistics, 30 states have not uh, implemented uh, it. Iron King. Have implemented two. Iron King. Yes. I, I'm struggling not to laugh yes. because uh, the way you said it, you were not even smiling at all. And you, it means you meant business. But, you know, I, I'm going to quote what um, uh, Amnesty International believes. Amnesty International believes that there is nothing convincing that death penalty deters more than life sentence. Because uh, probably by by extension, what they mean is um, what they mean is that uh, if you have these kind of death sentence awaiting someone, that person is likely to be more brutal. Is likely to make sure that oh, he doesn't face that thing. Then he wants to get any trees by killing the person involved but we'll come back to that after this commercial break you will answer my question please don't go anywhere